rewired headlights on a 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer. Alright guys, thanks for clicking on the video. Um, today we're working on a 2002 Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi? Mitsubishi Lancer. Mitsubishi. 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer. And the problem is it has no headlights. So basically what happens is we go to the switch, hit the switch on, but we have no lights. The dash lights work. But we get no headlights. Okay. The reason it doesn't work is here. Okay. Somebody wired in this headlight connector to fix a problem. Now, I don't know what brand this is, but um, the problem is here. The problem is in the connector with the headlight because obviously it melted the connector. Now, anytime I do wiring under the hood, I don't recommend you use these butt connectors okay because and anything that's anything that's under the hood is exposed to the elements now what that means is there's air there's water there's moisture there's dirt there's fucking animals can get in here I never seen that happen but anything could potentially get inside this connector okay so if you're gonna wire anything under the hood make sure you solder heat shrink or use uh, crimp and seal connectors but don't leave anything open if there's water there's corrosion if there's moisture there's corrosion and that means high resistance and that means shit like this okay so I got two new connectors and two new headlight bulbs just to be on the safe side okay the bulbs were still working but with something like this it's better to just get new parts now let me show you what I've already done okay so this is what I got I got two 9007's from Sylvania and I got two connectors now funny thing is their dormant parts okay I say that's a funny thing because the homie Esther, the mechanic OC, was just talking about dormant parts and how Eric O from South Main Auto and a bunch of other people recommend not to get dormant parts. But dormant makes a lot of good parts and they make a lot of parts that are not available from other um, manufacturers. So I like to go to dormant whenever I can. If you go a few videos back, uh, I did a video on a Ford Expedition for a a door lock actuator the actuator that I got was from Dorman that thing's still working it's probably been two weeks and it works good so I mean I get I guess it depends on what kind of part you're gonna be getting these are just connectors headlight connectors um, yeah we're gonna try them out and we're gonna see if it works if not I'll be making another video talking shit on Dorman but for now They've been working for me. I mean, I think it's just like any manufacturer out there. You have your good parts, you have your bad parts. Apparently, Dorman has more bad parts than good parts. What can I say? So let me open this up, and we're going to get started on the wiring. But before we do that, let me get a wiring diagram for you guys. All right, so I'm going to be using um, I'm going to be using Mitchell On Demand. For those of you that are not familiar, here it goes. Alright, so you go over to the repair, you pick your car by year, make and model. So it's a 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer and I think it's a ES. I don't think it matters though for the headlights. Okay, now over here you have all your categories on the left. I go straight right here to wiring diagrams. I go to system wiring diagrams. You can use this one if you want to get familiar with how to read the diagrams and what symbols and colors and all that crap. But I go to system wiring diagrams right here and then I scroll over to the right and look for headlights. Okay. 
Now usually there's a couple options for headlights. There's there's gonna be headlights with daytime running lights, uh, with HIDs. Anyways, click on headlight circuit and it gives you a diagram. All right, now this is the way I like to do it. I like to highlight the circuit that I'm gonna be working with. So I'll highlight my ground, but I'll, I'll choose green for my ground. That's just habit. And for my power side, which is these two, now remember I said, here let me zoom in a little more, I said that the bulb had two filaments inside, it doesn't matter how you wire this, this could be your low beam and this could be your high beam, the way it works is for the low beam it'll turn on one filament, for the high beam it'll turn on the two filaments. All right, now it doesn't make a difference here because if you look at this closely, this is a 10 amp fuse, that's a 10 amp fuse, that's a 10 amp fuse, and that is a 10 amp fuse. So that tells me that each filament of the light draws about the same amperage. So I can wire these four wires. Well, I can't wire left to right, but I can wire these two on the left headlight the red yellow and the other one was red blue I think we saw that earlier and then on the right headlight it's a pink wire and the other positive wire is a red white wire and then the grounds are black so we'll go we're gonna go black to black and then the other four wires it doesn't matter which way they go that's how I like to look at my diagrams I like to highlight everything now if you want to get rid of all this spaghetti over here just click on this button right here that says hide show and it'll hide everything that you don't want to see so only the things that you've highlighted is going to be shown for you and it'll make it easier for you to read the wiring diagram. This is why I like Mitchell and I prefer it over all data or any other programs that are out there. This is a pretty good program. But I usually keep everything there just, just so that I know that there's nothing else on the circuit that I need to look at. And um, make sure there's nothing else tied into this, this, um, this circuit. All right. I'm just gonna take the battery out just so that I can get the camera in there and show you guys um, exactly how. Anytime you disconnect the battery, negative first. That's just gonna give us more, more room to work with. And um, you don't have to take it off, but um, it's better for video. Okay. My snap on light. Put a little battery on the floor. Okay. Now you can see we got much better room to work with. Perfect. So I got my three wires right here. I have my red with the yellow, I have my black in the middle. And I have my red with blue. Go oh, here, let me go over the tools that you're gonna need. All right, before you get into any electrical work, you have to have basic knowledge and basic tools so you can get the job done right. First off, get yourself a good pair of wire strippers. I mentioned earlier that you're gonna have to do some soldering. If you're gonna work under the hood, any wiring repairs that you're gonna do, make sure they're soldered. You don't want this shit to happen to you. All right, solder your wires. Don't use butt connectors. This is a Craftsman soldering gun. Solder. You're gonna need some good solder. All right, I got this from Radio Shack. It has some lead in it. I don't remember exactly what 6040 means, but there's 60% something. 40% something else. Let me read. This product contains a produces chemical known to save it cause cancer, birth defects, or other parts of the cancer. Rosin core solder, okay? Anytime you're working on cars, rosin core solder. This is 6040 from Radio Shack. You may or may not need electrical tape, and you're gonna need some heat shrink. This is from Harbor Freight, and I've had it for a while, and they work good. They get the job done. You need a lighter. Yes, you can use a heat gun. Yes, you can use a soldering gun. But a lighter works fine. 
I'm not gonna blow anything up. Let's get to work. Okay, here we go. There's a little bit of wire already exposed. This is on the red yellow wire. But I'm gonna cut this crimp connector off of the black wire. And if I can't pull it off. Yeah, see that's why I don't like using crimp connectors. That one came off pretty easy. Alright, so what I like to do is leave about, I'd say that's half an inch of wire on each one. These are already cut, so somebody already started it for me. Somebody already got me, um, they gave me a head start, so thank you. Now, I'm going to wire these. So like I said, you want to strip a little bit off the end. So there you go. I stripped a little bit off of each one. Now I'm going to start off with the black one. Start off with the ground and um, wire it to the ground. So the way I like to do this is I make an X. I like to make an X and then I'll just throw one wire over the other. But you know what? I think before you start soldering, you want to slide your heat shrink over these wires. Alright, so here we go. You want to slide the heat shrink over the wire. Very important because then once you have it soldered, you're going to have to recut it and do it again. Slide it over the wire and do it again. Now when you're soldering, make sure, make sure you keep the soldering gun away from the heat shrink because then it's going to start shrinking onto the wire down here. And you don't want it. You want to do it over here. Okay, so we're starting with the black. Let me just strip a little bit more off the black. Okay. So, black one is the first to go. And I like to put it in an X and twist it over each other. All right. Now, you're going to take your soldering gun and you're going to get it warm. Okay, now the way you're going to find out if it's warm enough to solder is you're going to take your solder and you're going to rub it on the tip of the gun. Once the solder starts melting on the gun, once the solder starts melting on the gun, then you're ready to put the gun or the soldering iron onto the wire. Once the wire gets hot enough, the solder is just going to melt. There you go, the solder is just flowing into the wire. Okay, you just want to touch the wire and it's going to melt right in. If you have some good solder, makes the job easier. Alright, so that's done. Alright, now that this is soldered, you want to go ahead and slide the heat shrink over the solder, over the part you soldered, and uh, shrink it over, shrink it over your soldering. Just go back and forth till the heat shrink shrinks. Alright, that's one down. And again, I make an X and I twist them over each other. Papi, yes. Why do you drink this car? I'm working on the lights. Oh. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now again, same process. We're gonna put the soldering gun. Soldering gun. To the wire. Oh. Because that thing. It's hot. Be careful. There you go. I'm touching the wires and I can see the soldering starting to melt. Alright. Second wire is done. At the buzzer. Now you want to let it cool down before you slide the heat shrink over the wire. If you try to slide the heat shrink over the wire right now, it's going to start shrinking and you might not cover the full, um, the full repair. You can touch the wire. If it doesn't burn you, then you're good to go. So I'm going to slide the heat shrink over the wire and shrink it. Two down, one to go. All right. Just like before, you take your wires, you make an X, and you twist the wires over each other. This is gonna get pretty repetitive. So what I'm gonna do is do this side on camera and then I'll do the other side off camera. And then we'll check out the end result 
again throw some solder on the gun so you just hold it on the wire and rub your solder on the wire there you go and it just melts in melts right into the wire and then you're gonna slide the heat shrink slide it over the repair and shrink it especially on the edges okay now you want to make sure also that you use the right heat shrink you don't want it to get loose on the wires so that's done I'm gonna put a headlight on this I'm gonna put my fuses on there and I'm gonna test it out that's slow beam Oh, looks like it works. <laughs> it's gonna be the same thing for the other side. It's just gonna be cutting the wires. Here, actually, let me show you what the other side looks like. Now, on this side, you got a bunch of hoses in the way, but essentially, it's the same thing. I forgot to mention that on the other side, there's a little, um, this plastic cover. It pretty much holds the light in place. You need to pry up on these. And I think it's pretty hard because they are melted on here. That's that's how that's how you'll know this is it's fried on there. Because um it'll be pretty hard to take off. Yeah. Oh, this one's pretty good. This connector is not melted. This was actually in pretty good condition, but I'm going to switch it out anyways. I'm going to keep this as an extra piece just in case for any reason this burns out. Not this one, but the one I'm going to put on there. Um, but yeah, I don't have a lot of wire to work here, but essentially it's going to be the same thing I did on the other side. It's going to be harder for you guys to see, but if you guys saw what I did on the left side as far as cutting the wire, twisting it together, soldering that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys is it's gonna be the same thing on this side twist it solder it and heat shrink it <laughs> but don't forget your heat shrink like I did <sighs> all right take two twist it solder it now you slide the heat shrink over and shrink it okay do that three times fast and this is what you end up with right here twist it solder heat shrink three wires for that connector So there you have it. That's the finished product. That's a properly wired headlight. And that's a properly wired headlight. Okay? Twisted together, soldered, heat shrink, covered in tubing, and then covered in tape. That is a proper way to wire anything under the hood. Two headlights wired. On a 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer, guys, if you're gonna do any kind of wiring under the hood, remember, don't do... I throw the fucking connector away. Don't do any Mickey Mouse, don't do any, um... Don't do any... Don't do any... Don't do any Mickey Mouse. Don't use crimp connectors. Don't use buck connectors. Don't use home electrical connectors. I've seen those used before. The ones you twist on, don't use them. Alright? This is a connector that it had on there and it melted. I got two from Dorman. We're gonna see how those work. I've used a bunch of parts from them. That's the end of the video right here. Two headlights, twisted, soldered, heat shrink. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys on the next video.